Hi, my name is Randy. Welcome to Didactics Online for our second video on cranial biodynamic motion. Uh, this video is going to represent the different strain patterns as proposed by William Governor Sutherland. And uh, for this, we're going to again refer strongly on our drawings as well as on our disarticulated magnetic skull. So we're going to start by going through SBS flexion. So SBS flexion, we've already covered the basic motion in the previous video. All that's going to happen is now you're going to have the sphenoid and occiput moving in a position that prefers one versus the other. So in SBS flexion, it will flex more than it extends. Versus extension, where it extends more than it flexes. We're also going to talk about different cranial handholds to understand these different uh, dysfunctional patterns. Uh, so let's go ahead and discuss what the vault hold is really quick using this school. So our vault hold is going to have our index finger on the sphenoid, our pinky finger on the occiput, and our thumbs are just going to be used as our fulcrum to help guide our hands through the motion. So whenever you're approaching any of these different strain patterns, it can be helpful to use vault hold positioning to understand what is taking place. So what I like to do is bend my two uh, middle fingers and my ring fingers in and have a pseudo vault hold like this. Whereas if my index finger raises, that is going to indicate the sphenoid is raising on that side a little bit higher. The pinky is going to represent the base of the occiput, and again, my thumbs just help guide the motions. So in SPS flexion, if we're using our vault hold positioning, what you're going to feel is a head that widens and becomes more short. So it's going to feel like a fat short head. So what that means for a vault hold positioning is your hands will go further apart, transverse, whereas your pinkies and index fingers will approximate in the AP positioning. So again, you'll get wide and thin. For extension, your hand is going to approximate on the transverse axis, whereas your pinky and your index finger are going to stretch out a little bit. So you're going to have a really long, narrow face. So again, it can be helpful to use these hand positionings when we're talking about these dysfunctions. Keep those in mind. Uh, and again, here are different diagrams. I'll let you look at those on your own time. Now let's move on to a left SBS torsion. I'm only going to show one direction for each of these. Basically take every motion and flip it for a right SBS torsion. So in an SBS torsion, you're going to have your sphenoid and your occiput angled in a different direction. It's named for the side. All of these dysfunctions are always going to be named for the position that the SBS prefers. So if the SPS is higher on the left, it's going to be called a left SBS torsion. So the wing of the sphenoid is going to be higher on the left, whereas the base of the occiput is lower on the left. So it will look something like that. What this will feel like in vault hold positioning is that your left hand will go up and your right hand will go down like this. This would be the position it prefers. It's always going to be named for which side your pinky is higher on. That always helped me whenever I was going through this on my board exam. The next dysfunction we have is a left side bending rotation. So this is a physiologic strain pattern as well. It's a normal physiologic strain pattern. You're going to have two vertical axes going through the sphenoid, one through the sphenoid, one through the occiput, and about these axes, your bones are going to move in opposite directions. So for a left side bending rotation, the head is going to side bend to the left and become more con vex on the left. It will become more concave on the right. So again, the head will tip to the left and side bend that direction. So it's important to note that the motions around the vertical axes are opposite, whereas the motion around the AP axis is going to be the same direction for both the sphenoid and the occiput. What this will feel like in your hand positioning as the side of convexity gets more wide, the side of concavity will become more narrow. Your pinky will come towards you on the side that becomes more narrow. Your pinky will go away from you on the side that becomes more wide. So it looks something like this. The next strain pattern we have is our left lateral strain. This is our first of non-physiologic strain patterns. So what happens in a non-physiologic pattern is the SBS is never 
in the position it actually is supposed to be. Instead, it's going to shift a little bit. So left SBS lateral strain, you're going to have your sphenoid move to the left in relationship to your occiput. And whenever motion occurs here, you're going to have motion around two vertical axes, and the motion is going to be in the same direction. So if it moves in a clockwise motion around the sphenoid axis, it's going to move in a clockwise motion on the occiput axis as well. So it'll kind of twist like that. Now what that will feel like from the top of the head in the bolt hole positioning is that your pinky will move to the left. So it will feel something like that. A right would feel like that. Our next non-physiologic strain pattern is a superior vertical strain. What happens in a superior vertical strain is the sphenoid shifts higher in relationship to the occiput. You're going to have two transverse axes, and about these transverse axes, your bones are going to move in the same direction. So when the sphenoid tips into flexion, the occiput tips into its position that it would have an extension. So the sphenoid will tip into extension as the occiput tips into flexion. So it kind of shifts like that. Our next strain pattern is an inferior vertical strain, very similar, only this time we're going to have our sphenoid drop down lower than the occiput. And now when this happens, if the sphenoid tips into flexion, the occiput will tip into extension. If the sphenoid tips into extension, the occiput will tip into flexion. So it moves like this. About two transverse parallel axes and they'll be moving in the same direction. This concludes our physiologic or excuse me our non-physiologic strain patterns and it also concludes our video on cranial strain patterns as proposed by William Gardner Sutherland. This might be helpful for uh, board examinations or for any examinations on your own. Keep in mind the relationship of the temporal bone and respect to the occiput that comes into play for different strain patterns. Uh, I hope that you found these videos educational as well as enlightening, and I hope they help you out. Have a good day. Thank you for joining us.